Okay, so for this part of the video, we would like to go through the genetic problem practices on the worksheet. I highly recommend you, after learning how to assign the symbol, to work through the rest of the question on your own. Then check back to the video for problematic questions that you cannot answer for the um, correct answer. Okay, so let's start. Usually, genetic problem starts with description of whether or not the trait, either disease or a trait seen, is recessive or dominant. And our goal is then to decipher this and then to assign letters so then we can begin to solve the question. Now, let's see. The first question says, having a hitchhiker's thumb is a recessive trait. So what does that mean? That means um, you need two alleles to form hitchhiker's thumb. Now, let's first look at a picture of what does hitchhiker's thumb look like. So right here, if you stick out your thumb and you can bend your thumb, then you have a hitchhiker's thumb. If you cannot, then you have a straight thumb. And from the description, it sounds like hitchhiker is actually recessive. So usually what I do is I make a key and I will assign a letter. Let's say capital H is dominant and the little h is actually recessive. And we need both to actually get hitchhiker. And you only need one big one. So it can either be big H, big H, or big H, little h to have straight thumb. Now, after you have made your key, we can now map it back to what the question is asking. On the question, it says, list a genotype. That means the genetic makeup of someone with hitchhiker's thumb. So you can write little h, little h, because that's actually the genetic makeup. List a genotype of someone with straight thumb. So that will be big H, big H, or big H, little h. Easy enough, let's move on to actual questions. If two individuals with straight thumb marries and they have a son that has a hitchhiker's thumb, okay, what does that tell me? Well, the son has hitchhiker, okay? So what does that tell me about the two individuals? That means dad must have a little age and mom must have a little age because through meiosis, we know that that's how our offspring gets its genotype. One from dad, one from mom. Now, what about the other one? Well, the other one can be anything, right? So what is the genotype of these two individuals? Well, it says the two individual has straight thumb. So my option for straight thumb, let's check again, can be big H, big H, or big H, little h. Well, in the case that I need to have a child with hitchhiker thumb, my only option is then heterozygous. So there you go. The answer is the parents needs to be heterozygous straight thumb. Okay, so on the exam, you'll give me big H, little H, and big H, little H for the genotype of the two individual. Okay, let's move on. If you have a hitchhiker's thumb and your sister has a straight thumb, okay, now we're um, met with different situation. I know I am hitchhiker, but my sister is straight. Okay, now I don't know if that's a little age or a big age. I don't know yet. Let me put a question mark because I only know she is straight thumb. So that can be either big age or little age. List all the possibility of the genotype your parents might have. Now, did it say the parents is actually straight thumb? No, so we can be any kind of possibility. The main thing is they need to give rise to me, which means they each need to have a little h. What's another consideration? Well, they need to give rise to my sister who has a big h. So I can swap out whatever that part is. That's my contingent. So I can do big H, little h, cross with little h, little h. Or I can have 
big H, little h cross with, and I will actually substitute that with a big H. So this is my answer. These are the two possibilities. Okay, if you have a handle now, I would say stop my video and start working through the rest and see if you're able to do the rest. Then come back and check your answer. Okay. Now let's pretend you've gone through and let's continue. So did you get this correct? It says both you and your sister have straight thumb. What does that mean? That means I can be big H or little h and she can be big H little h, which means between my parents, we just need one big H, that's it. I just need a big H to produce me and I just need one big H to produce my sister because as long as one parent has a big H, then we can produce offspring that have straight thumb. So I can fill those with whatever I want. So let's try out. We can start from big H, big H with big H, big H. That's one possibility. Another possibility is now I keep the big H, big H, and I swap out one big H with little H. So that's another possibility. What about big H, big H with little h, little h? That works too, because as long as I have a big H, even if my partner gives the little h, my offspring will be big H, little h, which is straight thumb. So any of this can give rise to straight thumb offspring. Now what else? Well, it can also be big H, little h with big H, little h, right? Can you think of any po other possibilities? Yes, correct. What about big H, little h with little h, little h? So all in all, I have five possibilities. And this is mainly because they did not dictate the parents need to have straight thumb, okay? And that's why we can have all these options, including options of one of the parents being a hitchhiker. Next, if both you and your sister have hitchhiker's thumb, what does that mean? That means you and your sister are both little h. List the possible combination of genotype your parents might have. Again, it did not dictate if the parents needs to be straight or hitchhiker. So let's try this. This means dad and mom both need a little h but it did not dictate the other one. So let's try. We can have big H for both of the blanks. That's one possibility. We ha can have little h for both of the blanks here. And one more possibility. We can have a big H and one little h. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. What if I put little h here and big H here? Isn't that the fourth combination? Yeah, that would work too. You can list that except I would consider that pretty much the same because it's a combination, okay? So these two will count as the same. Okay, so this will be the answer. Okay, continuing on, number six. If a heterozygous straight thumb dad marries a homozygous straight thumb mom. Now, what is this question asking you to test or try to um, kind of practice. Now you're going to utilize the English and try to map it back into genetic terms. Heterozygous, what does that mean? Yes, that means you have two of opposite. So you got heterozygous straight thumb. That means a big age and a small age. If you're unsure, go back and check your key, right? Straight thumb. Well, this will be called homozygous. That's the heterozygous, okay? So, heterozygous straight thumb dad will equate to this. Marries a homozygous, that means the same, straight thumb mom. What do you think that is? Homozygous straight thumb is big H, big H. What would the, be the genotype of their offspring? What will be the phenotypic ratio of their offspring? So how do you do this? Well, you got to go through the specific steps we have set up previously, right here. What are the steps? List the genotype of the two parents. We already have 
that was big H, little h, cross, little big H, big H. Then you need to list the gametes. That's number two. Okay, let's do that. Well, what will dad make? Well, he can have one big H, one little h. What kind of a can mom make? Oh, just one kind, big H. Okay, that's number two. I have made my gametes. What's next? Then you do the Punnett square, okay? Okay, so let me do the Punnett square. I'm gonna put big H, little h, cross with big H. So what are my options? I cross them and I'm done. Now, the last part is answering the question. What will be the genotypic ratio? Now let's read this. Okay, the genotypic is the genetic makeup. So to answer that, the genotypic ratio will be big H, big H, two, big H, little h, equal how many? Half, half. So you can do one, two, one. Okay, got one part of this and one part of that. What about phenotypic ratio? Well, this part, are you going to list this again? No, your category is going to be straight thumb versus hitchhiker's thumb. That's your phenotype. And that is what? Do you have any hitchhiker? No, both of these are straight. So it's going to be all straight. Okay, so that's your answer for number six. Now, I would highly recommend again to actually go back and work this out again and make sure that this makes sense to you. Let's move on with the next question. So if you want, stop and then try the next question on your own before checking back. If a heterozygous straight thumb dad, heterozygous straight thumb, we know from the last question, heterozygous straight thumb, marries a mom with a hitchhiker thumb. Well, hitchhiker can only be heterozygous recessive. Now, what is the probability of their child having a straight thumb? How do I solve this? I go through the steps again. I make gametes. And then I make Punnett squares. And then I cross them, big H, little h, little h, little h. And then I interpret my result. This will be straight. This will be hitchhiker. So can I answer the question? What is the probability their children will have straight thumb? Well, you got half that's going to be straight and half that's going to be hitchhiker. So the probability will be 50%. That's your answer. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now we're starting another feature. Try again and stop my video and see if you can do this on your own. Hopefully you've done it and then now we're back and let's try this together. Brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes, okay? If brown eye dad marries a blue eye mom, okay, so again, whenever you read a genetic question, you're going to first make a key, just like what we did with Hitchhiker. You're going to list the phenotype, brown eyes, blue eyes, and you're going to assign genotype. Brown is dominant, so I'm going to say big B, big B, or big B, little b is going to give me brown eye. Blue eye can only be little b, little b. Great, now I have my key. I can keep reading and solve the question. If a brown eye dad marries a blue eye mom, hey, blue eye mom can only be little b, little b. What about brown eye dad? Well, he can be big B, big B, or big B, little b. Let's keep reading. And they have one kid with brown eye and a kid with blue eyes. So, 
how can these two individuals have kids with blue eye? Can big B, big B create a little B, little B kid, which is blue eye? No, which means that can only be big B, little B. That's how he's going to give rise to a kid with blue eyes. So what is the genotype of that? Your answer will be heterozygous dominant. So that will be heterozygous dominant, which is brown, okay? Moving on, next. Okay, we're going to skip through the question with the blood type, and I'll make another video regarding that and move on to number 12. Again, I highly recommend you to stop my video, then check back for answers. Stop my video and then go work on these, then come back. Okay, hopefully you've stopped my video and now you're back to check the answer. How do you do this? This says I'm gonna do, this is model hybrid cross. So if you've done low hybrid previously, you know exactly what the genotypic ratio is, right? And you know the phenotypic ratio as well? Okay, what was the genotypic ratio? Big A, big A, two big A, little A, two little A, little A, one, two, 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 one. And the phenotypic ratio was dominant to recessive, three, two, one. I got that memorized, did you? If not, okay, let's work through this. Again, you got your genotype, and then you said, what is the gametes? So the gametes are big A, little a, correct? And this is the same, big A, little a. So that's number two. And then I'm going to cross them. Well, big A, little a, big A, little a. And I'm going to cross them and then interpret them. What is this? Big A, big A, dominant. Big A, big A, little A, dominant. Big A, little A, dominant. Little A, little A, recessive. So what is the genotypic ratio? Well, big A, big A, one. Big A, little A, two. Little A, little A, one. That's why it's one, two, 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 one. What about my phenotypic ratio. Well, let's read. From the genotype arises your phenotype. So dominant to recessive is one, two, three, three, two, one. Okay, now let's try the next one. Again, how do we do this? What is the gametes? Oh, just one possibility. What about this? Oh, just one. So can you cross them? Yes, all I get is Heterozygous, so it's all heterozygous, and the phenotypic ratio is all dominant because as long as you have a dominant allele, your phenotype is going to be dominant. Okay, next one. What do we have here? Let's try another color. Okay, so that's your cross. Let's make the gametes. This makes big A or small a. This only can make small a, so let's cross this. Big a, small a, small a, big a, small a, right? And small a, small a. Ta-da! Genotypic ratio, can you list it out? What's genotype genetic makeup? Big a, small a to small a, small a is one to one. What about phenotypic ratio? Oh, let's try this. Well, big A, small a is dominant, small a, small a recessive. So my result is one to one. Did you get that right? Hopefully you got that right. Now, please give the genotypic ratio for the following cross. Okay, I am not going to bring you all the way home. You will need to try and do this part on your own. Okay, but I will get you started with, let's see, a few, a easier ones, and then you can check for the rest. Okay, this one is what 
die hybrid cross is. So go back to what we've done over here. Die hybrid cross and check if you can do this all again and get the right answer. Okay, so that's that. I'm not going to repeat that. Let's try one of these. Okay, so what kind of gametes do I produce? Remember, law of separation, you get big A and small a separates, right? Okay, so I'm going to draw it out over here. Big A and small a separates. They don't stick together. Law of um, independent assortment says that for different uh, allele of different genes. So big B and big A are allele of different genes. You assort them independently, which means you have equal chance of matching big A with big B and matching big A with little b. Same thing for little a here. Then you're done. What about this one? Well, I really only have one option and one option, right? I only have one option for A gene, one option for B gene. So now that step one, I got my genotype listed. Step two, I got my gametes ready. Then step three, I am going to cross them. How do I cross again? I put A gene together with the dominant on the left, B gene allele together. Then I can read them. How do I read them? This means dominant A gene, and this means dominant B gene. This means recessive A gene, right? Two small a's. And this means dominant B gene. So I am now interpreting my phenotype. This is genotype. This is phenotype. What about this one? Can you do this one? What is the phenotype for this one? Dominant A, recessive B. What about this one? This one will be recessive A, recessive B. Okay, let's check if any of them are repeated. Dominant A, dominant B. Nope. Okay, none of them are repeated. So the question asks for phenotypic ratio for this cross. Then my answer will be dominant A, dominant B, two recessive A, dominant B, two dominant A, recessive B, two recessive A, recessive B, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. That's your answer. Okay, this two, this two, this equals one to one to one. Okay, now try to finish the other two. Okay, see if you can find and list these out. And I will give you the answer right here. So for um, this particular one, it will be dominant A. Dominant B, two dominant A, recessive B, one, two, one. See if you got this answer for this one, okay? And for this one, it's going to be all dominant traits, A and B. They're all dominant A and dominant B. Try to figure this out and see if you can arrive at this. Okay, so this solves um, the first part of the worksheet. I'll make another video to explain the blood type and how to do the blood type questions.